Go rocks and blast beats for another episode. The nerdiest uh, podcast there ever there was. The coolest uncool as it has been tagged. And I think it just it just rolls off the tongue and it makes me very happy. The coolest uncool just, podcast. Yeah, I think it works. I think it yeah. works. I am one of the nerds keeping you company this week. My name's Josh Redbeard. I'm Margie. I don't have a red beard. And I'm Grant and I can't grow a beard. Uh, <laughs> and as we do every week, we are, first of all, we're going to take you down the nerdiest experiences that we've had during this week. And I'm going to start off with a podcast that I've recently gotten back into because I used to listen to it a while ago. It's called Critical Hit. So it's like a lot of people know Critical Role, like as a D&D podcast, but Critical Hits kind of, it's still a D&D podcast, but it's a bit more casual. Like everyone's not like fully crazy voice actors or anything like that. It's a bit more like, it's like a, it what it feels like when I play D&D, you know, I, I can't act, but you know, yeah, I have fun. I, I could not do a voice. I tried yeah. once and then I was like, no. <laughs> no. You know, it's, it's got all the, all like the good content, but all the awkwardness of like a real D&D campaign when the DM's like, you can't do that. And uh, so, yes, that's more like it. <laughs> they've got about like 600 episodes. Uh, they've done like a few different campaigns, but recently they've actually they've moved away from D and D and they're playing a game called Starfinder, which is like Pathfinder, mm-hmm. which is basically a different version of D and D. It's D and D with some slightly different mechanics, kind of more like fourth edition D and D instead of fifteen, uh, fifth edition, not fifteenth edition. Well, uh, yeah. We all know I'm Wizards travel. of the Coast. Fifteenth edition won't be far away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so they're playing Starfinder, and what they've, which is kind of like set in the future sci-fi, and what they're doing is, it's like they're on this TV show called Drifters, which is kind of like Big Brother meets Death Race. And they're like basically like galactic TV stars. That's what they're de- that's what they're role playing as in this <laughs> this competition. And just like they're trying to like figure out like why the, one of these teams seems to always win. Why is everyone dying around them? So it's like this weird noir uh, like investigation cross Mario Kart cross <laughs> uh, everything. It's basically just, they're, they're legal. They just have like a basically have a license to commit crimes. It's fantastic. I just I just had an image of people role playing playing Mario Kart around the table. Yeah. All right. And then I drive into I drive into this and oh I get I get a turtle shell and I fucking tw- turtle shell you. Yeah. And it's act, like roll, actually, roll for it. And that's basically it. So like there's they have, they have these races during cuz Drifters is like that's the race. So the first race they do is in like vehicles through like this canyon. The second one's in like they their ships and the ship has like five, like a completely different mechanic, but it's kind of like a like a Lord Kensington's rule of um of a skill challenge in D and D, which is basically like there's a certain difficulty level that you have to roll above to pass. Yeah, uh, and then there's I think you have to get five correct rolls plus the amount of people there in your party, or three fails and you lose. And essentially Ooh. they're like their race is like that, except for you move on a map as well. And there is actually like these boxes on the map so they can like turn on their weapons. Like I think in the first race they unlock some kind of like acid dropping thing so they could drop acid behind them to like get the NPC <laughs> cards. It's really fun. It's funny. Like one of one of the characters is a Android sphere that is just the cameraman. <laughs> so he's like talking about all the angles where he's like rolling diplomacy so he can like make the team more popular so like people will like donate to the team so they can activate their weapons earlier yeah, it's fantastic amazing that but, like, sounds real sick and that's like that's starting at like episode 600 like that that certain campaign so there's like five you know 500 600 odd episodes before that that are like different campaigns like the first two seasons i really enjoyed the first one the third one lost me because i'm not into the fey wild so i kind of like i wasn't as invested in that world so i kind of teed it off but yes yeah, check it out critical hit how about yeah, you Margie? Nice. what's the nerdiest thing you've been up to this week oh geez i've been going through i've been going through a nerd saga um i've as you know i've been in an intimate relationship with the wheel of time series and mm-hmm. as of the last time that we recorded that night i, f- I finished and I was like, oh, and I've entered, <laughs> <laughs> I've entered a deep bout of uh, uh, depression. Um, I've got a lot to talk about um, regarding Wheel of Time. So if any listeners out there have read Wheel of Time, <laughs> please slide it to my DMs because uh, I will talk about it nonstop. Um, so, yeah, so there's a big gaping hole in my life. So I've started trying to fill that void 
with listening to the Dragon Reread podcast, which I already was listening to, but now I'm listening to it from the start. So I'm up to like yeah. book five. So I'm just re going through the plot and I'm like, ah, oh, my friends. Um, and um, which, so like getting the recaps is really good. And then I watched all of the Rings of Power, which I actually really liked. Um, uh, cool. like cool. I, I don't understand the hate for it. Like, I know it's not completely in line with Tolkien law, but like the people who are giving hate for it aren't even people who know Tolkien more. <laughs> and like, <laughs> like, um, but it's more Lord of the Rings universe content and I haven't finished the Silmarillion, so I'm not going to voice all any super strong opinions like about the law, but like, I already know mm. most of the law, but I'm like, you know, it kind of tracks and yeah, that's shocking. Um, except for the the sea is always right part. I was like, yeah, uh, okay, it kind of tracks really the valor that are interested in the Numenorean people, except it's not very Tolkien's, I'm a professor at Cambridge, the sea is always right, they'll fucking do. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not one of his best lines. Um, so anyway, I'm depressed the Wheel of Time is over. I'm probably going to reread it next year. Um, I have a tattoo planned. Uh, my poor tattoo artist, when I tell him, he does really sick trad stuff. And then I'm like, and the dragon's going to be holding the Wheel of Time logo. He's like, uh, can we just do a dragon? I'll be like, nope, it needs to have the Wheel of Time symbol in it. It's, it's clever. And it'll just be like... And here's uh, him just like writing out names for other tattoo artists to give you like recommendations <laughs> to go to. He's, there he is just blocking me on all media. Yeah. Um, and I've got a bunch of books lined up. I'm building a read list, um, including like restarting this Silmarillion. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any suggestions for what to fill the gaping void in my life with <laughs> sci-fi or fantasy novels, um, yell at me because you'll hear about it. So let me know. My partner um, and I actually went to the bookstore today and she started looking at the wheel time. I'm like, don't do it. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I just stopped hearing about this. Don't bring it back. Please, please, no. <laughs> it's so good though. Oh, it's so good. Oh, you don't understand. Oh, Robert Jordan's God. He's amazing. Um, one of my one of my mates went to America and got back, and like one of the highlights of this trip was going to Robert Jordan's hometown that he lived in, and like all the streets are named after Wheel of Time characters and stuff. Oh, that's and cool. I was just like, that's fucking sick. And there's like, yeah. there's a tree there that's called the Avendasaur tree, which is a tree from the books and stuff. And I was like, losing my mind. Um, yeah. So Josh, hopefully you've got something life fulfilling I can <laughs> gain some joy from. <laughs> Well, I think like like for for my nerdiest thing, I think some people would consider this maybe a slap in the face, but I was like really flattered by it. Is there's a there's a, a TikTok going around or a, a, it's on Instagram, I was shown it, but I was literally either tagged in or sent the same TikTok like five times within 24 hours. And some people, like I said, some people would probably be offended by the content on it, but I think it's fucking hilarious. So it's clearly one of those ones like you're supposed to like what are they call like stitched together. So like someone's created the first half of it and then you've got to create the second half of it and it's a thing. And so the first half is this like cute tattooed girl, like sitting on a chair, like looking all doughy and she's like got a like knee up and her arms on it. And she's like, Oh, and then the, like the, the line above it says guys that don't cheat. What are you doing right now? So that sits there for a minute and then it just flips to this dude explaining the different types of trees he's made for his D and D character, like D and D campaigns. He's like, so I've made these ones that have some faces, but then I've also made some ones that don't have faces. So then I can kind of mess with my players. It just goes on. And yeah, like literally within 24 hours, five different people had like, yeah, either tagged me in it or sent it to me. And I was like, well, I appreciate that everyone thinks that I'm this fucking huge nerd. But if I look, three meters to my right uh yeah there's a you know there's some stuff that's very similar to that guy that i've made myself <laughs> and i'm about to claim back a whole bunch of my creative space <laughs> just so i can start making more uh fantasy stuff and so yes. yeah so i like i said i think some people would probably be offended by their friends thinking they're that much of a loser but i'm owning it to be honest no, i it, think it's really good 100 percent you i was I like, like <laughs> yeah just i also like that you're like yeah i got sent it on instagram because we're too old to have tiktok <laughs> yes i like how you also turned to probably face your warhammer 40k fan fiction that you told us about a couple months ago <laughs> that your whole world that you've created yourself you're like Yes, that is me. Yeah, <laughs> it is me. <laughs> so it's it's all in this very room. It is a hundred percent. 
Absolutely. I won't cheat on you, but I will be spending most of my time with Warhammer <laughs> yeah. 40k. Because, yeah, I won't cheat on you because I don't even have time for you. <laughs> it, it did remind me, though, as well, like a, a like a couple of years ago, I, I was seeing a girl who went to the States for a couple of weeks. And while she was over there, I was keeping myself busy and I made this big volcano that's like it's up there i can see it right now and when so she did came, a science project 100 percent. i've made this like massive volcano i put a little bottle inside of it so it could become like an actual functioning volcano but it's like it's there as a you know a feature piece and when she came back she comes into the room and sees it i've made and she's like oh you need to touch a boob and it was just <laughs> it was yep true but also just All right, we get it. You've it. touched boobs before. Good for you. <laughs> Stop rubbing it in. I could do it anytime I want. Oh, that's so, that's so unsatisfying. <laughs> so, yeah. So, shout out to being a nerd because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. The amount of but, Saturday nights I've spent at home with Wheel of Time instead of going out. Uh, I love being you made, you made the better great. choice. You made Honestly, the better choice. Absolutely. Save money. <laughs> Hang out with cool people in the fantasy world. I'm, I'm 100%. driving. 100%. But we got to move into the medium beat now. And the the medium beat this week, we're looking at some nerd news. And there's been, uh, uh, you know, there, there's some, a, a bit of back and forth. There was some, you know, trouble going on on Twitter. Some people making some claims. And then people have come back with counterclaims. And it's 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 all very interesting going through it. But the, uh, the metaverse has kind of received a shock as of late. And if you don't know what the metaverse is, it's sort I of I had this. to Google this. I well, did too. <laughs> it's, it's the like supposed to be the next evolution of the internet. We're all supposed to hang out in this sort of like NFT world. And people can buy digital parcels of land and you can kind of have your own thing and you can like people can have online stores in this idea of the metaverse but it's just the internet in futurama pretty much the internet in futurama (laughs) is actually a fantastic way to describe it as the sort of the metaverse but it's all meant to be like decentralized so meta who's like facebook's like parent company now has been renamed meta their ver- their metaverse is called decentraland and they have invested 1.2 billion dollars into this thing and then someone tweeted out saying that's a billion own- billion b- b- billion b- b- billion 1.2 billion dollars into this and uh one of the you know a founder of uh, an nft tweeted the other day that it only has 38 active users which is yeah pause for effect which are probably just all the gms at meta the company anyway but like decentraland like quote unquote hit back saying no we have eight thousand which for like i know people who can no i know people who can get more eight more than eight thousand likes on an instagram photo in less than an hour like that's not the clap back that I think they think it is. It's also like, so they've spent the GDP of like, I don't know, a small Pacific nation Mm -hmm. on making this thing. And there's, let's be real, somewhere between eight and 8,000 people using it. I don't know. There's there's not a lot. Probably most of them are members of the Facebook company anyway. So they they have to do it for work. It's not even 8,000 unique users. So it's people that come in and out there. I reckon there's about 12,000 unique users, but the the 38 become comes from, there's only 38 people actually spending money in the metaverse. So the the other 1,000, what, 1,200, 1,162 are just fucking just chilling there, not spending money. Just, Doing what? Like, what are you walking there around. for? Like, like walking what are you around. There? Like, they're walking the avatars around in this world. So yeah, so it's they're, not. They're just they're it's... just there to hack it. Obviously, like they're mm. looking for another Optus leak, but through yeah, meta. Some I uh, look. Who knows? Um, but but it's 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 interesting that you say about uh that it's the like it's the people that work for metaverse because it turns out it's not even them. So Horizon Worlds, which is another part of the metaverse, um their own developers have said for many of us, we don't spend that much time in horizon and our dashboards uh, show this pretty clearly. So the vice president of the metaverse, why is that? Why don't we love the product we've built so much that we use all the time? The simple truth is if we don't love it, how can we expect other users to? (laughs) And it's true. It's like there's, I've seen this idea, but there's nothing that excites me about wanting to, to go into the, I don't, I don't know if they just haven't so, explained it properly. Because, but like, because I don't get it. Like I had a Goog and I, uh, it says it's a virtual space where you can buy and develop property. Mm. 
like, but you have to use actual Money. real world dollars to do that. And it's like our generation can't even fucking afford a real house. Like my rental house is full of black mold and I think the front porch is about to rot through. But you want me to go and spend my money, which I really don't have, to virtually buy and develop property when you could do that in The Sims? Like I think And you can also control sorry, people and like burn babies and shit. Yeah. Like that just, <laughs> what was, if I could do that in the metaverse, maybe. But like it's like they're trying to capture like the Fortnite kids and like the WoW players, like all the like all these whales that spend heaps of money on these games. But at the same time, they're missing like the crucial part of no game. There's no game it's, there. It's just like you, I, if you can't meme about it or shit post yeah. about it, what's the point? Like I would like to avoid going to the shops in real life. There's no way that I'm going to want to do it animated. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you have to wait for 40 minutes in line at the pharmacist to get your antidepressants. Yay! And you're like, wait a minute, I have to do that already today. Hey. Yeah. Like, and like, the confusing thing about it as well is like, like you said, Grant, it's like, you know, they're, they're pushing this whole idea of online shopping. So you can go to like a digital mall and you can walk through a mall and go into all these different shops. But to me, that's more effort than just typing in the web address for the shop yeah. that I want to go to. Like, I can't understand why I would bother doing that when it's it's more difficult it doesn't make any do sense do you get it do you do virtual shopping in the game and then get the stuff in real life yeah or do you yes yeah. so, so you can like they'll so there'll be like a nike shop and there'll be an eb games and whatnot and you'll walk in and pick up like what look and digitally you'll quote unquote pick up a product go and pay for it and then they'll ship it from their store to you but that's but it's like, also animated so it doesn't look like the product you're getting in real life anyway no. it just doesn't make sense <laughs> no it's, it's just like a, the, it's, it's like just a one photo that like yeah. that stretches you know like when the photo yeah. distorts when it's 2d doing 3d it's just doing that in like your shitty <laughs> animated yeah. hands everything's just got like that the doge face <laughs> but, yeah. but I, also, I also love as well that like decentraland uh, again i think they were trying to clap back but it, it just doesn't it doesn't seem smart. What they were saying is like, they don't, uh, it's, it, let's say Decentraland is not a company that uh, it, it doesn't view its users as a product by which to measure success. And then Kotaku in brackets said, Kotaku reached out to ask what kind of metric it used to measure the platform's success, but did not receive a response. <laughs> and it's like, that's the only thing you have to measure your success is do people want to use this product? The answer is no. Like, yeah, just that's no. literally like what a company does. Like, uh like it's, it's i'm so confused is it like a tax break for them like what's the point actually i, I think that, that could it, be it could be i like i guess like they want to be there, there's going to be the next thing and i think they're just like we want to be the next thing and so they're investing into this idea and i guess when you're like I mean, mark zuckerberg like the, the 1.2 billion dollars to him is nothing like it's literally yeah. like oh it's a fell out of guys my you hit the ball. jackpot when facebook took over from myspace Mm. You're not going to do it again. But I think that's why they're doing it because they don't want to be MySpace. They want to be. That's why they bought Instagram. You know. So I think yeah. that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to stay. Are they on TikTok top. yet? Or does it just? I don't know. Where is this, where's yet. all that data getting mined to? China, yeah, they'll buy TikTok. Yeah, and yeah, Tencent yeah. isn't t China. Uh, Tencent, I think the same people that own Fortnite. I think they also yeah. own TikTok. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Sick. It's them. Great. Like, <laughs> fantastic. I don't know. Isn't competition part of what makes capitalism go round? Uh, Something. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Having I, monopolies I is what makes capitalism go around. They, they just want to own everything because then they can charge whatever they want. Why would you they... why would you base your economic principles on a shit board game? I don't know. That's where the word <laughs> monopoly comes from. I mean, <laughs> we could go down a very, very a very, very fun path. And maybe we'll do this on another one, but the original uh version of Monopoly wasn't like that at all. Just a little fun fact for you here. Let's let's hold that for another one. You've reminded me of that, Marky, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna share a story once about the uh, the original story of Monopoly. I know Dad great. Dad told me some stories about when he squatted in London and um, <laughs> sounded sounded cold. <laughs> That's that was my main takeaway. <laughs> but I think this uh, yeah this piece of news flows nicely into our topic for this week because I love a good segue and we're <laughs> speaking of flogging a dead horse. This is uh what. <laughs> What we're going to be talking about this week is the uh, the concept of flogging a dead horse, and this one actually came to me after Stop, trying. It's my... already dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it came to me after trying to make my way through all the Hellraiser sequels and just like getting progressively worse and progressively worse, and progressively worse because I wanted to see the new one, and so I was like, "All right, well, let's 
let's watch, let's let's take a stroll down memory lane and watch some fucking trash that just should have it just should have stopped but mm. like as you know in terms of balance for this topic the new hellraiser is actually really good the new hellraiser is probably the best since the original so okay yeah, so it's it's interesting. You know, we've covered it a bit in kind of you know the the, the remakes and the creativity episodes, but you know we, it's the the deeper question. And I guess you know because we're we're all very much based in the music scene as well. It it really is that question of when when is it time that people just give up? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, um, like I think this one the easiest place to start is like the rebooting and remaking cycle of Hollywood and mm. like in like in, in like entertainment. So like particularly TV movies and games, like yeah, the games reboot definitely. remake. Yeah. I figured Grant would be covering the games thing, <laughs> but like, you know, like, cause like I was like looking at definitions of like reboots and remakes and stuff. So, and it's like a reboot just resets the continuity of an established film series. So like, in Spider-Man, you know, they recast it, they retell the Uncle Ben thing in, like, a slightly different way. And it's, like, is that kind of, like, just a remake, though? Like, because it's still kind of the same story with mm. slightly different things. Oh, no, Iron Man's there for one of them. Oh, big, big difference. <laughs> like, oh, my God. It's, but, like, I guess that comes from comic books, where comic books will re like reboot the series like they'll kind of reset it to do a different origin or to do like a different story or to do a different adventure so like you don't have to worry about continuity issues and stuff um which is cool like it was a good way for comic books to keep going like you know if people were buying your comic books hey. keep making them couldn't think of a new character just restart spider-man again get someone else to write it <laughs> exactly get i don't know get someone else to draw some pictures um mm. like the only spider-man movie that i found remotely good and refreshing was the into the multiverse one which was great um like the animated one um and mm. that was really cool but like apart from that they're all the same like <laughs> you know i think superhero movies have a lot to say about that um yeah yeah but well, i think like superhero movies at the moment are like they're still on the up and up and up. We are seeing them sort of like teeter a bit, especially like, you know, the, the, the ratings for uh fucking black Adam are out now yeah, and they are good. brutal. They are. Like, like, <laughs> but, I mean, you could have, you could have picked that from the trailer. You could have yeah, picked true. that from the trailer. I mean, well, like true. when we talked about comic con earlier on this podcast, I think straight away, you would always like, that looks like dog shit. <laughs> that looks so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it did like i st i still want to see it and maybe like i'm half the reason why they continue to flog this dead horse is because i will just go and see it but i i, I feel like we're going to eventually see that with the marvel films they're going to run out of ideas they're going to have to like get crazy get weird i feel like they've already done that i feel like after endgame like most of the stuff they released has been shit like all mm. that f whatever what they said phase four like it's all been pretty bad let's be honest I, th I think the TV shows have been better than the films post that. Like, yeah, I they've been better, the but that TV doesn't shows, mean they're but it's, good. Yeah, that's that's the problem is they've come out swinging with all their, like, their most exciting heroes. They've come out with Thor and Iron Man and Black Widow and Captain America, and now they kind of have to go into the quote-unquote B team just to keep churning it out. Mm. Like. I don't know. I don't Just gonna know. keep flogging that dead horse. <laughs> exactly. I mean, aren't there different iterations of the Avengers? Can't they? Let's just redo that one. Do well, a time the, loop. Like, yeah, they're building up to the young Avengers now. So they've got. They've oh, jeez, I don't want to see adolescents on TV. Avengers. Is that like? Is that like adolescents? Because I don't want to. Yeah, see it's that. like they It's like they're kids. So it's like yeah. It's, oh, it's... but they'll, they'll be played by like twenty-eight-year-olds. So I guess that's yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah, Just give me the absolutely. Teen Titans. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they make a TV show of the Teen Titans? Yeah, they did. Um, I did. It wasn't. It wasn't the same. It wasn't. Wasn't the Teen Titans I know. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, like outside of film and whatnot, like I think, like I kind of said, it's you know, music is such a big part of you know, our lives in multiple different ways, and there are so many bands and so many acts out there that absolutely should be fucking throwing in the towel like the first one that came to mind when i was trying to think of examples is the band trapped now if you're un if you're unfamiliar with trapped they had one semi-popular song 
20 years 20 ago. years ago about that and then they've just become like a meme bam on the internet who just like picks fights in the comments like lamb goat will write an article and traps will go from their official facebook page and like pick fights in the comments and like kind of build this fake hype around them but then i saw a like a video of them playing a gig at like a saloon in florida to about 20 people which nice. is like I know grind projects who can get more people to a show on a Tuesday night. Like, <laughs> like at that point, it's just like, give up, like really, really just give up. But I like, I mean, what, fair, if it, what if it's making them happy? Like what if they just <laughs> love playing music? That's actually what I was going to say. Like, you know, we talk about like, you know, if a band's not releasing music that I like anymore, should they give up? Probably not. Cause it depends on the authenticity of what they're doing. Hmm. If they're enjoying doing it, then who cares? Like I can choose, I, just, I could just choose not to listen to it. Like, you know, the new Parkway Drive album, I reckon it sucks. The last couple have sucked, but it, there's obviously everyone in Europe loves it because that's what they're doing. They're writing music hmm. for Europe and now yeah, they're, and they're making, touring Europe and they're, they're smashing it. Squillions. So like, you know, it's obviously I mean, been a concentrated effort. Mm. But yeah, yeah, I think that's that's probably the the fair difference to make because it's not so much like you know a- accounting for taste as such. Because I personally like I I really don't like the new Slipknot album at all. No, no, but like, I could not make it through. Oh my god! No, no. oh and my like, god! Per- personally, I think they peaked at like subliminal verses and haven't really had it. Since, Let's be real; but, they like, peaked in Iowa. But yeah. <laughs> I, I my, the last album that I liked from Slipknot was All Hope Is God, but that was different to the other albums as well. And I'm like, guys, oh, this yeah. is cool. And then they came back with like all the super good production. I'm like, this is soulless to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, the opening track on the end so far, um, it's called Adderall. Um, yeah, I was like, I was like th- this was your this was your choice for opener. That's a bad sign. Normally, you want your opener to be like build into something epic or fucking punch your guts out from get go. And yeah. it was like, it, is this is is this intentional? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you guys mean to put this on here? <laughs> Always got to kick it off with the anti-climax. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But like, yeah, like that. Set that the album, expectations low, then it'll get better from there. <laughs> yeah, like that album, as well as the Parkway album, both went to the number one albums in Australia uh, on the charts and stuff like that. So clearly, there's still a fan base there that does still care. Whereas when you look at a band I mean, like Trap, did you did it, you not listen to them? Did you not listen to the album that's when it, it came out? I mean, that, that's exactly it. Whereas, like, yeah, for, for Trapped, it's clear that, like, you know, Slipknot is still, still selling you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of tickets at every single Oh, show. I will go see them like, when they honestly, come to Australia. Probably like, of course I fucking than will. than they've ever been. Like, even looking like, like the third track on their new album has already got 20 million plays exactly. on Spotify. Exactly. So I think, like, that's that to me isn't so much flogging a dead horse because there's still so much like love and support and when you know we are seeing a lot of bands kind of come back but it's yeah it's when i see a band like trapped who was semi-irrelevant 20 years ago and they're playing shows to 20 people like it's at that stage surely they can't be enjoying it like they they would go on stage and look at 20 people like out in the crowd and surely they'd be like this sucks at that stage i reckon they're just contractually obligated to be honest (laughs) Ah, I think maybe the ego is the problem there. Like maybe mm. it, maybe it would be all right if they weren't like picking fights on Facebook and shit. Like you could pick fights on Facebook in like a hilarious way, um, mm. and you could just be like a shit posting band and just be mm. known for being a shit posting band. Or you can pick fights on Facebook because you think that you're really hot shit and you're like, oh, <laughs> fucking step off, you fucking. And yeah, like, and I feel like that's more what they're doing. That's so. That's... Uh, <laughs> A hundred percent what they're doing. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, got... I... sorry, go on. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, we've got like other bands that have released albums recently that have been going for a long time. Like, mm. um, Tool. Fucking, we waited 13 years for an album <laughs> and like it charted, you know, but like the glory days of Tool are over. Like mm. Maynard, Maynard's a sex pest as well. So, um, but like people still rated it and it did all right and it's not bad, but it's not it's not my Tool album of choice. When I feel like listening to Tool, I don't feel like listening to Fear Inoculum. I feel mm. like listening to like something that's like fucking lateralis me. Nostalgic. You know? like, <laughs> enema. Enema oh, goes so hard. Like I, I want that nostalgia. Um, mm. Whitechapel, that's a band who've changed their sound a lot. But for the better, um, I reckon. that Their last two yeah? albums have been killer. I love their last two albums. Well, I A New Era of Corruption is one of my favorite albums ever. It just, it's hard. I like it. 
I discovered it when I was a teenager and I was like, this is fucking sick. And I still, I still love it. But like, you know, and the 2021 album Kin is like, it's not bad. Like I still really like it. It's just hella different. It's definitely different. Yeah. Like I never thought I'd hear clean vocals on a white chapel record. That's (laughs) not two things I ever thought I would see hand in hand, but Mm. like, you know, it works. Like they've evolved their sound, which shows that they've like evolved as musicians I guess like yeah it doesn't feel like they're writing for anyone in particular yeah and that's kind of it as well you know it's like when the band releases the same album over and over and over and over and over again just because it's like oh this is what our core markets love like you can kind of tell like the fans just sort of teeter off and it's that irony is like oh we're writing for the people that love it but it's like but the people that love it are going to get bored of it like you need to evolve you need to keep pushing forward it's like yeah I I like I mean, we use Parkway as the example, like their last album reverence, I thought was probably the best thing they've done since horizons. Cause it was different. There was something like yeah. cool and interesting about it. Like well, I thought, I thought was... that's what was good about Aya that like, mm. it was very markedly like we're going for stadium heavy rock vibe. Yeah. And I was very like, bon that's kind of cool. Like I liked, okay, I liked like Winston's Vice fucked Groups his voice. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, um, like Winston's fucked Vice, his voice. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and then that's just what I thought. Like Winston had <laughs> fucked his voice, and then I was like, mm. "All right, you're doing a Bring Me the Horizon." Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like Bring Me is a great example. Like they have evolved and they've brought their fans with them, so they're still quite like you know headlining festivals over the world. Like they're still quite at the top of their game. Um, and so yeah, yeah like, and like, their their new stuff's actually pretty good. Like catchy as fuck. Yeah, catchy it's real fuck. catchy. Like I don't know, maybe it's just meant to appeal to us old people, but I'm like. <laughs> this is a vibe because I put on suicide season semi recently. Me and my housemate were like, let's go back to our emo days and like swept the fringes across. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is not, no, Didn't this is well. not as good as I remember. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, dear. <laughs> like, I see why you so, stopped screaming. Yeah, mm. I think that was a smart career move. <laughs> <laughs> But Grant, tell tell us about in the gaming space. You 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 quite clearly have uh, something quite you know, deep to say about the you know flogging the dead horse in the gaming space. Where well, did you take this topic? Everything these days, like there's <laughs> no, like like I guess we did do an episode about can you do anything new. But most things these days, it's just like our oh, new generation means remaster a bunch of classics so we can sell stuff, and we'll bring out a couple of subpar new games that no one cares about but really like i'm just getting the new xbox so i can play like my classic xbox game with brand new graphics like they're remaking which like because it's atmospheric i don't mind this they're remaking all like the resident evil games Mm. and they're from like the start of you know 3d graphics so that's a bit different but like remastering like call of duty Modern Warfare that came out in like 2006 probably didn't need to be done. And like mm. those kind of games, like Dead Space, like I, I, I streamed Dead Space on my own Twitch account like uh, about a year ago and it holds up fine. And that came out in like 2008 and they're remaking it again now. I'm like, it probably, well, it's going to look fantastic, but did it need to be remade? Probably not. Is it mm. going to be a reboot? They didn't say. Does it have an extreme twist at the end that everyone already knows? Because the people that are buying the Dead Space remake have played the original Dead Space. Are they going to change it? Who knows? Like, I just don't get it. Just make something new. Yeah. I think people are scared to lose money. So it's like, oh, we'll just use this name that everyone knows. Well, that's that's it. Like, I tried to find psychology on why, like, we can't just let go of things. And it's not really – there's not really a psychology – to it I guess it's more just comes down to like nostalgia um like I did find one little thing like you know it's it's hard letting go is hard because it means freeing yourself from an aspect of your past and things that thing has become a part of yourself so if you let go of that thing will that change who you are but that's not really the same as like a movie or film franchise but for most of it like I um like I found an interview with a film studies lecturer and it's mostly just money um yeah. it's and like it, it's not exactly unique to our modern times but just like i think the financial crisis really spurred along making more remakes because they were like what's something that's going to guarantee people to come see stuff yeah. or what's going to guarantee people to buy stuff and stuff like that it was like fuck let's just release something that's got a guaranteed fan base because you don't have to introduce 
drum up new interest in anything. Like people are already invested in an idea or a concept or a character. Um, there's your ready-made audience and you can capitalize on the emotional connections and the nostalgia that people have to it. So like with the with the games, like re-releasing it, it's just a safe money grab. Like, mm. and that's what I that's all that I see in like the game space. Like when they're just like yeah, let's re. We're just remark. We're re. Yeah, it's not even nice, remaking. Pretty... Like a lot of them are just remasters. They're like that's the worst. Like a remaster. It's like just the game was obviously beloved. Like it doesn't need. Well, except to just for like converge albums. Better. You fail me, Redux. That slaps. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but even like a lot of converge albums for say, like the charm is the production. And if you take the production and change it, then it loses the aggression that it had. And he's like, oh, you're just actually just a sad dude. Mm. Yeah, a hundred percent. You watch what you say about that. Kurt when I'm around. <laughs> but the the other side of that, in the especially in the music scene, is the moment because so many, you know, so many nostalgic albums are turning between ten and twenty years old at yeah. the moment. Like you know that that kind of oh, heyday. Get it? For, I'm old. Yeah, for us around like that sort of like two thousand, like uh, you know, early, late nineties, early noughties into like you know, say twenty ten. All those albums are turning between you know ten and twenty for the next little while, and I've seen like you know, pop punk bands that like are good and have a bit of a following releasing their 10 year out, you know, anniversary of an album that again was good, but not like groundbreaking or anything like that, but releasing like 12 different vinyl variants of it. Are you talking about Motion City soundtrack? I'm talking about like so many bands I've seen do it. Like, like, like new stuff. Yeah. Fair. I understand. Like, you know, like I, I have the record label. I have to do the business thing, but like, we've never had more than like five vinyl variants. And that's because we want one in, you know, like the U S market, one in the UK market, one, you know, like back home, you know, one for a band exclusive, whatever. But like, they've got ones that are like, you know, exclusive to urban outfitters, you know, exclusive to HMV. (laughs) Specific to like hot topic. Yeah, and it's who like goes into there's... physical stores anymore? What the fuck? Yeah, I want to go into them the virtually. Yeah. I want to metaverse it. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's so many examples of just yeah, it's just like it is just a cash grab. There's there's nothing. There was no reason to do it. Like if you wanted to do like a ten year tour in it, that's kind of cool. Like I, I like that when bands come out, it's like we're gonna play this classic album in full. Fuck yeah, cool, do that. Um, but yeah, when when it comes to just like milking it for all it's worth it really does cheapen the product like i remember just seeing that i can't remember what band it was but i remember it was a band that i liked on an album taylor swift (laughs) it was definitely not taylor swift i know apparently she's released new music yeah she has unfortunately i've seen it everywhere i I just yeah i didn't know so many people liked i thought that was like a thing Mm. from like 2009 sorry anyway no 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 it's 100 (laughs) percent But Margie, going back to the the psychology stuff you were saying earlier, is it because that was a another point? Because I I was trying to think about why, and I think like that that idea of identity, I think, is probably pretty important in the music space, especially because it is such a you know it it becomes as you said, it becomes someone's identity, like they are this person from this band, where it's like, you know, yeah, whether it's you know you you've invested so much of your life into this thing and into this skill, like. It's it's really hard to let go, especially if you're at the top of your game. Like, and you never really know when yeah. the top of your game is. Well, two like, examples that I had um, mm. were Meshuga and Gajira. Like, if you mm. told me that I would be listening to new albums from them, you know, when I'm like 29, 30, I'd be like, "What?" Like, yeah, <laughs> like as a teenager, I'd be like, "Holy shit, that's sick!" Like, because mm. they're they're two bands where they're at the top of their game and they've stayed there because they are really unique. Like Meshuggah's new album slaps. Yeah. I I love the new album. It's really good. And it's because who else does Meshuggah as well as Meshuggah? Like, Mm. well, it's also like just the, what they've added as well. Like the whole, the the layer of like the ambience and like a, all the tension in the background of the music that wasn't there in the old albums, you know, yeah, it's been like real clinical, just chuggity chug. And like, there's a bit of atmosphere, but now they're just gone heavy into the atmosphere and the vibe as well as still having that heaviness over the top. And yeah. And they're pro- like, they've progressed. And again, like Gajira, like each album from Gajira, you can tell which album a Gajira song from. Yeah. Song mm. is from like, you always can, you can go like, Oh, master serious, obviously. Um, but like the, again, their new album, like from last year, really fucking good like um a funny thing about that album as well is at the um 
because I've got the DVD for I think it's the the way of all flesh, and mm. they're in that DVD. They like they're jammed around the studio, and Mario is actually playing the drum beat from Born for One Thing, and that was like ten years ago. That that song came out <laughs> last year. So like everyone's like, oh, you know, I can't believe they changed the sounds. Like, well, obviously they've they've been sitting on that one for a long time, dude. Like it's been coming. <laughs> like the, again, they're just exploring shit and that's part of the fun of being a musician is that you can explore different stuff and you can, you know, like vibe out and try different things. Like, Mm. and yeah, like as an athlete, you know, when the top of your game is, you know, when you're peaking, I think like, you know, Usain Bolt, I think that's pretty obvious when he fucking (laughs) smashed all these records and stuff. It was like, you know what? That's probably the peak of my career. Yeah. But like, when, when does a musician do that? Like, especially if they're not, Taylor Swift who tops the charts with every album. Like mm. when you're when you're playing heavy music, how do you know when you've really peaked? But also in like your music, like peaking is completely separate to like say sport, because like you're at the peak of your physical powers. Like you can become a better musician, but it doesn't mean you're gonna be more popular. Because a lot of that's just chance as well. Your promotion as a big thing. Like if you could if you could even have a good product, but if you can't reach anyone and no one's gonna listen to it, then Oh, the amount of bands who yeah. are successful who release dog shit music and you're like, <laughs> Really? Like I know like fifteen better bands than this, but like, mm. you know, like it's so expensive to get good PR and to have a good release plan and all of that stuff. Like mm, um, money, 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 money. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah. I guess you understand that Mr. Record exec. I a hundred percent do on multiple, multiple levels. <laughs> you know, I, I, I put the question in the notes about like, you know, what are, what are some examples of things that really need to call it a day? And I immediately, as I was thinking about it, like when I, so, you know, it depends on what time I go to the gym, you know, gym's got TVs fucking everywhere. And every now and again, I see that the bold and the beautiful is still on fucking television. And my brain immediately goes, surely that should have called it a day. And so I looked in to the bold and the beautiful. It has been going it has been going as long as I've been alive. It started in 1987. It is 35 years old. Oh. They make it has, bank too. It ha, yeah, it has just been uh, it has just been like re you know commissioned for its 36th and 37th seasons. Yeah, it it hit in the US number one on the like on the like the viewing charts. They they average three million viewers a week. So like like one percent of the US population, which is a lot of fucking people yeah. in the US alone, watch a 35 year old TV show. So obviously. Is Bold that just beautiful. nursing homes or like? <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably to be honest, because I I would definitely always think of my grandma whenever I uh, yeah see the bold and beautiful. But like the the two things to me that came to mind that I I really wish that they would call it a day. The first one is Futurama. I really wish yep. that they would stop just slogging keep it that. Dead dead horse because it's been it's been downhill since the reboot. Like the first couple of episodes, but they were all right. And it's just gotten like so irrelevant. Like people I think still are holding on to it for like nostalgia's sake mm. but it's just it's not what it used to be and i feel like the longer they do it the longer they sort of tarnish the memory yeah. of the fucking just don't originals. watch the new stuff ever they mm. peaked with season four and it should have stayed there oh, when they got cancelled agreed agreed and the other one for like a similar sort of reason i don't know if you either of you two but like one of my favorite like british comedies is red dwarf i fucking i've loved red dwarf for the longest fucking time i grew up on this show and it it like got cancelled after season eight and left on like a massive cliffhanger that like you didn't really know what was going to happen. But it was written by uh, it was Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. And after that, uh, it was a Rob Grant left, and so it was just Doug Naylor, and he kept on trying to get the thing rebooted and whatnot. So he's not and the event- funny guy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> they were just better as a team, and it kind of came back, and all the actors had aged quite badly. Mm-hmm. And it is like, it's, they did like a movie and then they've done like another, I think four or five seasons now, something like that. But I tried to watch one of them and it doesn't have, even though it's exactly the same actors, it's one of the same writers. It doesn't have the heart or the soul Mm. of the originals and it's like yeah it it like because I've, I've been going back through all the the old seasons again like i refuse to watch anything after season eight and all the, the like the old stuff still holds up so so fucking well but yeah like every time i see something about the new ones or i've seen like a clip or something like it just yeah it, it's just awkward and gross and sad yeah i there's 
I found a list of like apparently the some great reboots and I was like going through this list and I was like hmm this is <laughs> this might be worth conversation because <laughs> like um they included in there was like the live action Disney films and I was like you really? you y'all know my feelings about that yeah. and they they just need to die can they just leave our childhoods alone please <laughs> like um uh yeah and star trek was mentioned but star trek's an interesting one because it has had so many different iterations over time mm. um mm. definitely and i actually really liked the movies that were released i thought they were really th- good they, they're like, all I'm, like different characters though like a lot of the reboots are like completely different characters yeah so i think it's, exactly it's a bit so it's different, different stories and stuff yeah. the movies were um kirk and spock but yeah. like done differently i don't know um but there's yeah, other ones the, that the getting... smart thing that they did there was like when they had the first film they you know they had that whole like uh you know time travel thing which yeah. changed the whole future i think that exactly. was a really really smart way to do it because it, from the from the get-go you knew okay this is a different story this is a different yeah, yeah. and yeah. that was that was a really good way of doing it and like like star trek fans already expect variation and difference it's you know same universe different premise sort of each time Mm. um but there's a buttload of sequels and things that are happening (laughs) um top gun sequel came out has anyone seen it no i've never seen the original top gun apparently it's really good everyone really likes it it. yeah i haven't seen the original one love it americans love it the the original one's actually pretty good um i haven't i haven't seen the remake but yeah that was like number one in the box office in the states and americans sweat it but like i wonder how much of that is like america patriotism versus yeah actually being a good film um scream which there was a new movie this year uh which was actually pretty good that one's pretty good um i thought it was really funny um and you know they did all the things right like (laughs) They were like hyper self-aware and like yeah. explained like all the tropes that they were going to do to the audience. Mm. Like it, and like you know they brought back some of the original cast members, which was funny. Um, what are other ones that keep going? Um, Batman Begins. Apparently, that's the best Batman series. But now they're redoing years. Batman again. Well, I mean, yeah, they've redone it twice. Twice since. since they, yeah. yeah, they had Batfleck, and now they've got uh, fucking old Rob mate. Fleck. <laughs> Rob Fleck, yeah. That <laughs> kid. No, Twilight, um, Twilight, yeah. Twilight yeah. Ben. Ro- yeah, Robert Patterson. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh, like honestly, Vampire I've, Batman. I've really enjoyed the new Batman. Like, I really, okay. really enjoyed Rob. Like, like yeah, whatever his name is. Uh, I keep or forgetting his name. Twilight but Boy. Yeah. Twilight Boy. It, yeah, it, it was really, it was well done. I'm I, yeah. like they they're doing a sequel to the, the Joker film that I don't think is going to be it's not going to live up to the original I don't think mm, no but yeah shrug emoji there um <laughs> uh some crazy successes were Toy Story three and Mad Max Fury Road I really liked Mad Max Fury Road I mean it's, especially three since the decades third... yeah. three decades after the last Mad Max movie had come out well and the they... third Mad Max movie's shit anyway so I yeah. don't know. I don't I re- like I really did not like the Thunderdome. <laughs> um unnecessary Tomb Raider that they remade Sorry. it in 2018. I don't know why you'd ever do that. Um Angelina Jolie as Lara Croft was so hot. <laughs> but I'm that sorry. was a terrible film as well. Like like yeah, Angelina Jolie was so hot as Lara Croft, but that was such a bad film. <laughs> um The There's- Star Wars series, that's another one that is worth discussing. Well, it is very hotly contended, but I will fight any nerd that doesn't say Andor isn't. I haven't watched Andor yet. I watched Rogue One last night to prep myself for Andor, though. Um, Andor. Rogue One's and, probably my favorite Star Wars movie. And series. I cried. I cried. It was. It's so good. You know, it's a good Star Wars movie when you cry. Yeah. A- Andor um, is great for multiple reasons. One, because it's not a fucking story about a Skywalker, which I fucking yeah. love. Because this the Skywalker story, like if they if they do anything more to do with the Skywalker saga, like Skywalker Skywalker saga story, whatever, that right there is fucking a dead horse. Because that story's been overtold, like unnecessarily well, overtold. I I have a problem with like the big problem that I have with the seven eight nine trilogy is that it's not canon with the novels. Because the, well, it's the other the way novel. around, isn't it? Though the novels aren't canon anymore. 
Yeah. I think that's well, the novels did. the novels came first, and the novels, in my opinion, had a much better story. <laughs> yeah, I, of, I agree, but they, they like, just said, this it's, isn't it's, real it's, anymore. <laughs> it's yeah. still the Skywalker saga, except, you know, and it's more interesting because it's not just like, oh, no, there's an omnip- omnipotent evil power of, like, bad, and then we have to unite and be the rebels against the badness. It's like it's more exploratory and it's much more interesting. And so if they made an alternate 789 universe where <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of spoilers, Palpatine's ch- grandchild offspring with laser powers, it followed, again, the Skywalkers still. Like, I mean, I know that it, Kylo's a Skywalker, but, you know, he's, he's not. He's a solo. Um, <laughs> um, like... I think I, I'd be okay with that. But, like, I'm really glad that they're making all these other series to expand the universe. And like, Yeah. It, but in I a way, and that makes sense to me, though, because the original three movies were made for 12-year-olds in the 1970s. Uh, no, they the, were made for cool people in the 1970s. They were made, they were made for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. They, they, he, you were not 12 <laughs> in the 1970s, George Josh. Lucas not that old. specifically <laughs> said they were made for 12-year-olds. And then the first, like the prequels, were made for 12-year-olds in that time, in the early 2000s, which was me. And then the new ones were made for the 12-year-olds these days. So it just makes sense. It's like a band. It's like everyone only likes the album before. Yeah, they never like the new album. They always like the album before the new one. They always want the album before the new one. And then when the next one comes out, they're like, I wanted the album that was before this. I, yeah, <laughs> so, I was just getting my head around it. But like, no, but like the expansion of the Star Wars universe is great because it's it's like the Star Trek universe where it's a really good concept. Mm. Let's fucking roll with it. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. It's like, yeah, the universe itself is so rich in stories. Yes, to yeah. be told. The side the side series is is really yeah. is carrying it these days. And I think that's that's why I like like the Rings of Power as well, is because I love Tolkien's world built world building. He's he was a genius, and the Rings of Power just explores a really nice deep element that we don't really get touched on in the Lord of the Rings as much, and. Mm. Can tell Josh disagrees with me there, but it's it's more exploration of the way. It's no, it's not like they fucked it up like they did the Hobbit. <laughs> My <laughs> bias funny. just comes from the fact that I really needed this to tank, so then Amazon died. But I mean, that's that's just another story for another day. It, it's, it's too uh, big I'm, to it's too big to fail. Come on, <laughs> Josh, we've got to get someone on the inside, and we've got to bring it down that way. They staked so much of their future on the success of this show, though. If this if this show had like tanked as I hoped it would, it would have really badly hurt Amazon. Well, and I would what have really I'm hoping, that. what I'm really hoping is that because the wheel of time was so shit, Amazon will just give up producing <laughs> that, and then someone else could take up the wheel of time and put rings of power money into the wheel of time, and then I'll be happy. <laughs> I don't um, think anyone else has rings of power money. <laughs> no. Well. <laughs> Time for me to become a multi trillionaire. And... Even like Netflix doesn't even have Netflix money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have money for Netflix. Whoever I was scamming my account off deleted their accounts and now I'm accountless. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, okay, I've got a good one that needs to die. Okay, go on. The, the Transformers franchise. They're going to release a new movie next year. Um, that's still going. You know, like. I'm, I'm going to 100 percent agree. I like. I've been a fan. Like, I literally have Transformers tattoos. Transformers was my first mm. bit of nerddom, and I was so excited. Oh, when me and my brother were so obsessed. Yeah, and the live action Transformers was so so bad. And what I think what made me the most mad is there's like there is a part in the third film that could have saved the entire franchise. Wait, you made like, it to the third film of the movies. I've, I've watched all of them because I'm, oh my God. I, I, I didn't them? mind the first three, but after that, I liked, just, I liked the first, downhill. the first one or two. I thought that was really good. Like hard nostalgia, right in the field, yes. Optimus prime. Fuck. Yeah. Like, but the third him. one could have had a hard ending, and I think that's where you're getting. And then they just went straight around it and just put like, yeah. "No, nah, we need to make more money, boys. Let's keep going." Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Like, yeah, it could have had a hard ending, but like, it could have been the ultimate mind blowing experience because they like they get all the Transformers and they say like, "You're not allowed on planet Earth anymore. You've got to get on this rocket ship and get out of here." And as soon as they mentioned rocket ship, my eyes went like this, and then they showed the rocket ship and the lander. Because if you were fucking, if you remember, there is a rocket ship and lander transformer, massive fucking yeah. one. 
and that was like i was like it's fucking it's uh fucking omega, omega supreme omega supreme omega supreme and i was so fucking excited i was like oh my god this is gonna fix the last two movies this is gonna make this movie the best ever this is gonna be omega supreme and then it turned out to be a fucking rocket ship and a lander and i was mad like i i walked away furious at my like my own fucking fault for thinking that they would put fucking omega supreme yeah into why a would but like film. think but about like, it developers like why would you introduce a giant piece of machinery oh, if it's not going to turn into a fucking everything. robot like right? what's the right? point <laughs> oh, to be fair God. though as, as if you ever believed they were going to give you that much content in one movie they already gave you sentinel prime you weren't getting omega supreme oh, i was so excited for omega supreme i'm not gonna lie i literally like the second i saw it i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. and then it yeah it was honestly uh, though the sentinel prime heel turn wasn't bad though hmm. yeah yeah to be fair it's like they they obviously knew the law quite well it was quite well researched into the law like the fall and you know the originals and all that kind of stuff but like yeah the yeah <laughs> just i don't know you're 100 right Margie. like i think but maybe that's a really, really good example for the last question, which we have to say is when would it be okay to bring something back from the dead? Is I want I want the Transformers thing to die and I want them to leave it alone for like five or six years because I feel like they can do so much better. I feel yeah, like they, they would I, I feel like they just need to instead of just trying to keep it going to make money, just give it a little breather. Just like mm. just a little bit. Make like a kids TV animated series. <laughs> like that costs nothing, They're, I'm yeah. sure. They've and done then, that. The War, they've been War doing that the whole time. On, yeah, War, I mean, War for Cybertron just, on Netflix, which is actually pretty fucking good. Or just rescreen the original Transformers series, which slapped. <laughs> yeah, and then true. True. and then give it like 10 years and then come back to it and be like, here's some more Transformers for you. You know, like sometimes people just, you know, you got to give things a little break. Have like a Fuck. little breather. You've just inspired me. I think after we finish recording, I'm going to watch the original Transformers cartoon movie because that was a fucking incredible film. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I could watch the it. The height of imagination. Brother. I can't wait for Megatron to transform into a handgun. Yeah. 100%, 100. <laughs> and become quite small for some strange reason. Don't know where the rest of his mass goes, but they're magic the robot Starscream machines. Being in Starscream's hand, sure, cool. It's whatever. Energon or whatever it's yeah. called. I can't remember. Um, I'm going to accept that. But uh, I, like, what about for for each of you? As the kind of rounding out for this topic is what what do you want to see die and or brought back? Oh my god! Um, I, ha- I had something that came to my head that I wanted to see come back. That we're talking through this, and I've had a full fart. It's just I can't <laughs> believe it. All right, I actually found an essay because my main my main ones were: Can you just stop remaking Spider Man and Batman? Um, like just stop remaking the same fucking films. Okay. Um, maybe Slipknot. Maybe the end so far. Maybe just cut off the so far bit. Maybe. Um, <laughs> like I've and just come play some really good shows um and then i found a really good 2009 essay on the internet by thomas r willits Mm -hmm. and i found a really good excerpt about the latest james bond film so this was their releases in 2009 this is when casino royale came out probably this is like the casino royale and quantum of solace and pre blood diamond which was just or whatever it was called um anyway um i (laughs) Okay, um, you won't find James Bond smoking or um, ordering, this is about not smoking or ordering a vodka martini um, in, you know, the James Bond films. And it says, Mm. but you won't find them anywhere in Casino Royale or Quantum of Solace either. So in other words, instead of your children dying from throat cancer or emphysema or becoming alcoholics, they'll grow up to be hired assassins. The new Bond films, although stripped of cigarettes and drinking, are filled with more violence than ever before. That could be said of the same could be said of the Dark Knight, which is ironically darker yeah. than ever. Is this a form of modernization, bringing an icon into present day society? Really, am I that old? I grew up watching worse things than Bond light up a cigarette and blow up a building with a hidden explosive yield um, yield hidden inside its filter. Does leaving this trait out of the new films make anti smoking groups happy? Oh yeah, you bet your blue tar for your lungs it does. Does it make <laughs> me feel like we've somehow let something truly original and iconic slip away into a static free, hermetically sealed, aristocratic weight, waste bin? And I was like, that does sum up my feelings about remaking old shit sometimes. Like, <laughs> I want Very my James fair. Bond to be drinking, smoking, womanizing. Yeah, can leave that. But like, you know, <laughs> like, and being a shit spy. I don't want to see him be good at anything. <laughs> That's why we have would... Archer, though. 
<laughs> that that's the the demand for archer came from the james bond movies being remade. <laughs> yeah prove me wrong <laughs> I went back to, it's Dr. No, I think was the first James Bond film. I went back to watch like, the very, very first one. And my God, the action scenes of that are so bad. He's like swinging a punch. Sean and the Connery, dude's head is it? like, Yeah, it's like his head's like five feet away from the fist and the dude like does a backflip as if he's just been punched in the face. It's phenomenal. So, so And bad. like the sounds don't line up and it's just yeah. so mm-hmm. bad. And he, yeah. he just sits around smoking and drinking and then he's like, better go do some spy and, and just moves that <laughs> to a car. And is just smoking and drinking, driving a car, <laughs> crashes it into the bad guys. Like, whoops, that worked out well. <laughs> Grant, what um, about for you? Did uh, did that? So i yeah, they both came back to me. So something they should just let die. Indiana Jones doesn't need a fifth movie. Yeah. Didn't need a fourth movie. Yeah, he like, got I, killed in the Star Wars movies. Yeah, so like good. exactly. Like I didn't even like. I didn't even like the Crystal Skull when it came out, mm. and I was when did that come out? How old would I have been when that came out? I would have been thirteen at best, I reckon. Yeah, I'm trying to think of when that was. So I reckon that would have been two thousand and eight. So oh, I, boom! Yeah, I said it I was, just before you. Yeah, I was twelve, <laughs> so I was twelve when I came out, and I thought it was bad when I was twelve. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't watch it. I was fifteen. I was like, no. Yeah. I'm- that shit. I, and like, I was 21 and I didn't watch it, so it wasn't. I had, awesome I had like the original <laughs> box set. I still have it actually of the first three films, and then the bonus disc. And I'm like, oh wow, four DVDs. And then when the fourth one came out, I went and saw it. I'm like, this sucks. Oh wow, <laughs> I've got my own like quadrilogy here <laughs> that doesn't involve the Crystal Skull because the first three are just moi. But yeah. it's nothing that I think should come back. Never should have died. Never should have been cancelled. Firefly fair yeah very very fair but is it also good because they didn't let it get to the shit point no i reckon there's there's a lot there that could have been explored because they rushed it out in the end to be honest oh they oh my god they rushed it out so much and then there's there's like the firefly movie um, yeah serenity serenity and i was just like oh that's a solution just kill everyone sick yeah that's basically (laughs) the last episode yeah spoiler alert Spoiler alert. Yeah, that was a big spoiler. Sorry. Everyone dies. That was, I, thought only, seen it. I thought only one of them died, don't they? It doesn't matter. It was one of the good ones. Yeah. So, you know. So effectively, yes. That was Joss Whedon though, wasn't it? Or am yes. I making that up? Yeah. So then like, cause I reckon Joss Whedon probably could have gotten about like four or five good seasons out of that because that was about what he got out of Buffy. And then Buffy started to go well, downhill. Because he went on, downhill. he went straight onto Dollhouse, I think, after Firefly got cancelled. Uh, hmm. But even then, but like bring, they... bring it back. Nathan Fillion's still yeah, he's in he pretty good it. fucking. He could get it. Yeah, bring it back. <laughs> but even when they they when they release Firefly, they release it on the TV out of order. So they started with this <laughs> bank heist episode because they thought that the first episode didn't have enough action in it. It was too much world building, so they put this random episode, and the whole thing was released out of order, and then it was cancelled before the rest of the series even came out. So that's what makes. Uh, fucking what's it called? Serenity. <laughs> <laughs> Such a shame. So, I know it's a complete side note, but I just like can't stop laughing at the fact that I love that uh, we as nerds are eschewing gender stereotypes. Where the only person who continually says people can get it is Margie. Me and Grant have yeah. never said anything <laughs> about anyone we find attractive and that they can get it. It's just Margie being like, "This person can get it." I'm like, yeah, I love it. That makes me happy. It really does. <laughs> I'm painfully single. I haven't been in a date in so long. <laughs> oh god, what is human touch? Adam Driver, call me. <laughs> oh, might be able to yeah. fly over with his ears, <laughs> like Ben Stiller. <laughs> <laughs> But we are, dear listeners, going to move into the final beat uh, for this episode. And uh, the final beat for this one, we're going, I'm I'm going to, I, I've tried it last week and I'm going to continue this to see how it goes. Start editing them to, to put them on the TikTok. And I feel like the last one went pretty well. It actually got us quite a few followers and quite a lot of likes. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm trying to stay with the young hip kids. And, and if you're uh, bored, you have a previous 17 weeks worth of content you could get editing true. as well. Uh, it's yeah. very true. I 100% good. <laughs> Get I mean, to I'm it, boy. <laughs> but so every Friday on the Northside Nerds Instagram and on the TikTok, we ask an important question. Uh, and so this week, the question is, a would you rather? Uh, and uh, Margie, let's let's start with you. Is would you rather be the hero or the villain? All right. So as much as I think I would make a great villain, um, and that's definitely in line with my chaotic energies, um, <laughs> I think I'd love to be a flawed hero, like 
I think there's like something in humans where there's an innate desire to do good, like, or to mm. help. Um, and like, we all want to have some kind of lasting legacy. That's why people reproduce maybe. Um, like that's why I studied science in the first place. I wanted to help people and help like change the world and now dropped down on that, didn't I? Um, but in the context of like the capitalist patriarchal hellscape that is 2022, like what would being a hero constitute? Like would I be a hero to the people who lead us and be a government approved hero? Or would I be a hero to the people? Can I be communism woman is mostly what I'm asking and lead a revolution. Because if I can, then yes, I would like to be that hero. A bit of an anti-hero might have to might have to eat a few rich. Then you would be my hero, Margie. <laughs> Absolutely, you would be my hero. Well, that that kind Raises, of follows stickle and hammer. Yeah, that follows <laughs> into what I was going to say. So, if I was to be a hero, hero or villain, first of all, it would depend the context. In the comic book world, I'd absolutely be a villain. It'd be fun. It'd be so fun. Comic book <laughs> lives, they don't matter. They're not real people. Who cares? Exactly. In the real life, <laughs> it doesn't matter because one person's hero is another person's villain. So you can't win in real life. No one cares. Someone hates you regardless of what you do. So vi- hero, villain, yeah. you're all the same. But if you could have right. super, mostly superheroes have the powers. Mm. So if you're yeah, so then you just, then technically life, you're, then... you're, if you're, you're just someone's dictator. That's what I'm going for. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen how communist is work, communism's worked out of the past. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's about to follow it again, isn't it? Margie Mao, you can call me. <laughs> uh, Josh. But, uh, Margie, I, I think the same as you, but like, yeah, it's definitely like, I, I think I'd very specifically be the anti-hero. Like I always find like any, any D&D campaign I've been involved in, anytime I play any sort of like role-playing game, like like any fucking, any of my fucking Fallout characters, they've all been like- I start a lot like, of fires. I do start a lot of fires, but like it's generally doing something good. Like I think in- in this world as we know it, like if I was to go and become a hero, become a villain, it like the newspapers, the news, everything would call me a villain because I'd be out there like fucking blowing up oil pipelines and shit like that. Like I would be an eco-terrorist for fucking sure. Like that would be... Oh, yeah. And, so like in, in this day and age, I would be... Like, but like until you wouldn't be an eco-terrorist. Like, well, well technically like, you would be a villain though because you're not offering an alternative method, are you? You're not fixing no. the problem. You're just causing another problem. <laughs> I just want to Robin Hood it. Like... I grew up watching Robin like, Hood. Those foxes are great. And yeah. you know what? Still from the rich give to the poor. Yeah. Yep, and I, I think I probably should. Yeah. I should probably just like define eco-terrorist as like someone who's blowing up. Cause like the, the definition of an eco-terrorist in our world is someone who like blows up like mining equipment and stuff like that to save the environment. Whereas like oh, really the, All right. an eco-terrorist should be someone who destroys the environment. Cause you are calling, yeah. causing, but that's what, food. so big businesses are eco-terrorists. Yeah. In, in the in <laughs> literal definition of it, but by like, you know, how, how we are described in the media, like, like Sea Shepherd are considered eco-terrorists and Greenpeace are considered eco-terrorists. And so like, I would, I would, in how I would be written about in the newspapers and stuff like that, I would technically be a villain. So. Can you imagine if Sea Shepherd had someone like who could fly, shoot lasers out of their eyes, mm. had super strength and all mm. that stuff? Just Man. smash like whaling ships to pieces. It'd be fucking Just yeah. like Thick. fold them in two, like take like, all the people to safety, fold the whaling ship up into little pieces. <laughs> could you turn really into, call like a little whale slide yeah. underwater? Like, I agree. Like I don't think you could really call Sea Shepherd terrorists because they don't like instill fear in people. That's no, the main they, thing they, of being they, a terrorist is like. Oh, the, I don't my, know. They they put skulls onto their t shirts. Yeah. Oh, the definition pretty of, heavy metal. Yeah, like the definition of being a terrorist is using fear to force like your political ideology. Mm, but that is that is how the newspapers would describe what yeah. Sea Shepherd do. Look, that's, if that's I if I'm thing. a hero who gets called out by the Murdoch media, I would be pretty happy about that. I'd be like, oh no, an enemy of the Murdochs. Oh. <laughs> But dear listener, we need to know what uh wh- what would you pick? You have the choice of being the hero or the villain. What would you be and why? Every Friday on the Northside Nerds Instagram and TikTok, I'll post a, a wonderfully edited video. You leave your notes and we'll oh, I've got comment. it. I've You've got, got it. it. You've got if it. If I if I was a hero, I would get this machine kills fascists tattooed across my chest. <laughs> I call myself the Guthinator and uh... That's the message we can all get behind. <laughs> I love there we it. go. I love that. <sighs> Glad I got that one out. <laughs> um, someone make me a Guthinator t-shirt, please. Uh, All right, we'll get to work on that. I'll, this I'll machine. Put my, <laughs> my my epic uh, Photoshop skills to work and let you know what I come up with. <laughs> 
<laughs> I reckon that's that sick merch idea. Everyone can wear it to the gym. Mm. This mm. this machine kills fascists. <laughs> Good way to get arrested. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Till next week, dear listener. We appreciate you and we keep love being you. a nerd. Keep Hashtag. nerding hard. Hashtag antihero eco terrorist dot <laughs> org. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>